Jared Worm, welcome to What Now? Thank you. I was in my early 40s. I was at one of the most highest paying jobs I think there was around within the, the mining industry. Had a lot of time on my hands one night, do a night shift and found the word permaculture. Looked into it a bit more, realised, hey, this is the sort of thing I've been looking for all my life. This is what I really need to do. I've always had an affinity to the land, always wanted to work with the land and never realised that it could be done in a sustainable way. That permaculture is a holistic you know, design science. It's about designing your life from the, from the ground up. A garden is a very big part of that because we can actually obtain all our resources from a garden. We can get all our food, all our clothing, all our construction materials, all our medicines. We can get all that from a garden. Corns are just awesome. Oh, look at that. Well, for organic corn, out of season, it's not doing too bad. Things like community gardens are a place where people can come and, and, and share information, um, be educated, um, and reconnect with the land, work out how we can uh, live in a more harmonious way with the earth. What we're doing here is of ultimate importance because of that fact. We, you know, it, it can demonstrate that it can be done. It, it, it's the first block of land that we were given. A small group got together. We're slowly, you know, putting our energies together, you know, work out what we're doing. But it's working. Um, and and we're, we're hoping that we'll be given some more land um, close to town shortly so that we can uh, demonstrate maybe uh, doing it on slightly larger scale. We can actually have a city farm, you know, start up a city farm and that sort of thing and, and uh, bring in a bit of an income and all that sort of thing. Um, and then hopefully from there it'll extend out and this thing will become commonplace. And through education programs, through um, teaching permaculture design courses and stuff, we can have teams of people like myself out there doing what I'm doing right now in the not too distant future. That's my dream anyway. Behind this is, um, is, is solid. Uh, we needed to set up that skeleton, if you wanted to call it that. As a permaculturist, we call it the invisible structures. Um, when, when it comes to designing any sustainable system, part of it is the invisible structures, the, the, the human energy involved, the, 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 the legal um, matters that might, might uh, have to be adhered to before we can move forward, and all these other, other things that need to be looked at. And uh, once again, you know, permaculture is about looking at the complete system, not just plant a few plants in the garden. It would be really good to have an electronic list of, of contact details on Dropbox. So we need a letter of endorsement still from the Shire. If people aren't interested, I'm not, I don't want to try and change their minds. I'll only, I'll only educate, I'll only uh, transfer knowledge if you want to call it that, I'll only share information, I'll only um, help those who are willing to help themselves. I mean, that's pretty basic, that one of the biggest principles in permaculture is work with nature, not against it. If someone comes to me interested in growing food in their backyard or, or retrofitting their house so it's more economical or, or um, growing all their own medicines or, or growing, you know, building a natural um, structure to live in, then I'm there, I'm all in. Now it's actually quite edible. Can eat the leaves on it. Jared, a lot of indigenous remote communities have food security issues and access to nutritious food and resources. What will the community garden and permaculture be able to offer to that sort of an issue? We can lead by example and create space where bridges can be built to connect uh, 
different ways of thinking, um, different cultures, different um, people. Permaculture is very much about traditional um, traditional ways of doing things because traditional ways of doing things are very successful. Modern man has pretty much ruined himself 150 years where traditional cultures right around the world, especially Indigenous Australian, have have continued on for tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of years successfully and lived in harmony with the planet. So we've got a lot to learn from each other. We've got a lot to learn from each other. Five years, I I don't really want to say because most people won't believe me. Go on, try it. I, th I think that we're going to, uh, I'm going to be so damn busy, it's not going to be funny. I think we're going to have a team of people like myself that are, that are going to be motivated, excited and running towards an enlightened planet. What is the first step that I can take to maybe get you to know this space better? Spend some time down here. Um, whether there's people here or not, there's a couple of seats, just sit around and, and get in touch. Get in touch with, with, with Mother Earth, you know? You can't do that sitting in front of your telly or your computer as you're doing right now. Get out there and, uh, and touch it. Things like this tend to attract alternative thinking people, um, but it isn't a group of hippies, so don't be scared by, you know, a couple of people with dreadlocks and that sort of thing, because um, th th it, it, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Shankers, what now? So what's going on, Shanker? At the moment, we're, um, we're making a spiral garden. Um, it was an idea from um, Gerard Worm, our uh, community garden uh, permie. This is George, everyone. George um, is travelled from Exmouth. I kind of didn't realise there was such a knowledge base here, and because I'm brand new to all this, so I know nothing. So you know, through Danny and um, and Wormy, all of a sudden there's all these doors opening up. So I'm, you know, like it becomes more and more exciting. I think. Community Garden Open Day at this stage, I believe, is on the 30th of March. It'll be here on site at, uh, in Coolabar Drive, next to Lars, the dentist here. Um, and we'll, it'll be starting about 8 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, and it'll be running right through to uh, mid-afternoon or early afternoon. And yeah, please come along. We'll be having, we'll be painting rocks. We'll be doing all sorts of crazy things. There'll be tours, uh, uh, regular tours around the garden. Um, there'll be activities for the kids. Um, there'll be all sorts of stuff. See you there.